I'm sorry. Hi, everyone, and welcome to the 2020 Lockport State of the City Address. We'd like to start today with the Pledge of Allegiance. I pledge allegiance to the flag of the United States of America and to the republic for which it stands, one nation under God, indivisible, and liberty and justice for all. I'd like to start today as well with the blessing from uh, Chaplain Steve Benarsik from the Vineyard Church. Dear God, as we open this time together today, I just want to thank you for this great city of Lockport and how you've blessed our city. And I could personally say I'm proud to say that I live in Lockport. And I thank you for all the businesses that are in Lockport. And I just call out to you that, that you would just bless the businesses in these difficult times. Just bring prosperity to them. I ask that you would give the people, the owners, the ones who run the businesses, guidance and direction and wisdom and new ideas on how to make their businesses grow. And more importantly, I just ask that you give them peace during these somewhat financial difficult times. And I thank you for all the people, the men and women who run this city, who make it happen, are great leaders. And I ask when they get together, when they plan, that you would give them wisdom, guidance, and direction, and new ideas to better this city, even though it's a great city. Bless them and their families. And I thank you for our great mayor. And I ask that you would just bless his message to us today, that you would bless his life, his leadership, I ask that you would just bless his family. Amen and amen. Thank you, Chaplain. I'd like to start by saying thank you for attending today's 2020 Lockport State of the City Address. And thank you for being flexible with us as we had to pivot and turn this event quickly into a virtual event. We appreciate your continued support of the Lockport Chamber of Commerce this has been a year of changes and first time experiences, but our chamber and its members have stayed strong together and will continue to be here to help our members through this. I would also like to thank our sponsors for your support of the Lockport Chamber of Commerce and for your support of the state of the city. Those sponsors are Homer Tree Service, Deconstruction, Sizzles, Lockport Medical Express, the Montebello Estates, H.R. Green, Baxter and Woodman, Christopher and Burke Engineering, Prolongus, V3, Joliet Junior College, Strand Associate, Sitgo, Heritage Crossing, First Midwest Bank, and that is it. We will continue on uh, with this. We are gonna go ahead and bring up Merv from Sizzles. We had a nice little round of applause from the group we can have. Oh, sizzles. So it's homegrown and small, and honestly, it was just a dream that I started with. So I have a long-lived relationship with being a restaurant person. That was all I ever really did. It was the only place I ever really fit. There are so many owners that are in that same exact boat. So. I am very grateful, Mayor Strait, that you went out and fought for us. I am very grateful that our chamber, which Tim, thank you, it's been an amazing experience. Um, I am luckier than most. My, my brand was carry out. So I, I'm watching people around me really struggle. So what we do is we try to patronize a different place every week and we do it from the restaurant and we order stuff that we would never try and we do it as a group and sometimes we do it twice a week if we had like a good tip pool because all my employees pull their tips and um, sometimes I'll treat and we try everywhere and you don't see my name on that ticket you see my little imposter that I sent but, but I assure you we're eating there um, when you go to our restaurants we want to build an experience it's the most important part all of us are extremely social people. I know myself, the only reason many of you know me is because I've either marched in your parade 
I endorsed your event, I sponsored you, I supported you, maybe even I fought with you on Facebook, but either way, we're real people that own these businesses. So don't get us involved with others. Don't report people. These are humans and we have to do what we need to in order to survive. I've made it very clear that I support anybody's decision that people are going to operate through this. So again, thank you for advocating for us. We're real people. I've made some serious investments. I have an entire strip mall that rides on my success. Other small retail businesses. And during the pandemic, landlords are another group that are greatly affected, but because I have the support that I do, and I look for the help from the city that they offer, I'm able to survive. So keep your dollars as local as you can, because it does stimulate the hours we schedule our corporate employees as well, even if they are corporate chains. But please, during this, if you can choose mom and pops because they rock, go there and have an experience that we can provide. Uh, we do need your feedback too, because we're rebuilding everything from a bomb blast. Uh, never in my life did I ever think like a communicable disease would keep me from doing what I love. So um, I, I have a degree to fall back on, Ooh, but I didn't make it in corporate. So I think if we're all patient and we adapt and we support what's going on in town instead of just fighting each other, uh, we can get through the devastation. And it, for us, it's about feeding our children it, and about making sure that we make our ends meet. Maybe some of us don't have kids, we're living the dream, we wanna still live the dream. So it's not political for us. We just want you to succeed and we wanna see you leave our places healthy and happy. Um, I am grateful that I could still sponsor. So thank you for the opportunity. Thank you for fighting for us, Tim, thank you. Um, we'll be out here being diligent as well, masking up, I guess, or not masking if it's your thing. Do what makes you happy. We just wanna feed you. <laughs> Bye Lockport, thank you. Thank you, Merv. Now to announce who we all really came here to see, <laughs> our incredible mayor, Stephen Streit. <laughs> thank you, it's very kind. And thank you, Merv, for coming out and, uh, and, and speaking. Um, everybody okay with this mic? We good? All right. Um, look, I, I wanna thank everybody. I know this is kind of weird and awkward and we've never done anything like this before, but uh, we'll try to make the best of it. Um, Again, I want to thank uh, the Chamber for hosting this. This has uh, always been a fun event. Uh, it's a Chamber fundraiser, and so I appreciated everybody sticking with it, even though the venue got changed to this virtual meeting. It's really about supporting your Chamber and, and each other and the businesses, so thank you for that. A um, lot of stuff to talk about today um, that I want to get to, so I want to uh, just kind of go through a number of things, um, but let's, let's get through the heavy stuff first, all right? Let's just start heavy so that we can uh, not go <laughs> such a, uh, we can end on a better note. You know, in the beginning with our whole COVID thing, you know, this all took us um, by surprise, took the whole world by surprise and it kind of railroaded through and nobody knew what we were dealing with in the beginning. And those lockdowns in the early days were just something that, you know, we, we all understood and agreed to do. And, you know, some of the first things that we did was try to make sure that, you know, those businesses that had to get shut down, that we encouraged you to continue to use them, as Merv was saying. Right, I mean, I came up with this whole, you know, fun motif about, um, you know, uh, kind of when we're all working together back to those old posters back in the day. Um, and so this was really important to, to support all of our businesses. It wasn't just restaurants, but that was one of the things that uh, we, we rallied behind in the beginning because that was something that was important. But when it came, as this went on longer, we realized that we needed to do some other things as well. One of them was uh, just support our businesses in general. Um, so we had come up, the city council and I had come up with a, uh, a Lockport initiative where we could find some grant money to give to all the businesses that were affected by the shutdown. Um, the council did a great job. Our staff was magnificent. They put together, you know, they found the money that we needed and we knew that we could get about $350,000 that we could set aside for this, uh, which was uh, wonderful. We were very blessed to be able to have that kind of money to do this with. The next thing was we didn't know how many businesses we were gonna be able to help. We were gonna be able to help five, 10, 20. We really didn't know, but Lance and Ben and Lisa and uh, Renee Sabin on the council, she was a member of this team, really worked hard to find um, you know, all the businesses that were in need and work with them. And ultimately in the end, we were able to help you know, 45, 45 different businesses with these grants and loans. And then to make it even better was when the care money came in, 
into the county, we were able to actually get that money reimbursed. So anybody who took out a loan was actually able to be given a grant at that time. So in the end, it turned out to be 45 grants um, for all of our local businesses. So that was a real blessing that we were able to do that. Um, another thing too, you know, the, the community just really rallied around a number of different things. You know, our Lockport um, Food Pantry has been around for a long time. They do great things. There was multiple times during this pandemic where they needed to get restocked because people were really in need. And the community has always stepped up and just brought lots of things in. There are also businesses that help too, B&B Produce. They open their doors. Um, they don't normally sell to the public directly, but um, they were able to do that and get people, you know, milk and eggs and some things that were tough for a while. Uh, you know, I know Walmart started to do, you know, special things for driving up for seniors and other stuff. So a lot of the businesses that could help also did, as well as residents who, who put all their foodstuffs into the pantry. And then, you know, another thing that we did too was, um, as this kind of rolled on, and we started to get a little better understanding of how this disease was affecting people. We realized as time went on that people who had pre-existing conditions, um, people who were elderly were really getting hit hard with this. So as we started to have to go back to work, as we still have to you know, live our lives and, and make money so we, that we can pay the bills and, and keep on with our lives, um, we wanted to make sure that we were protecting those who were most vulnerable. So Lockport Shield was an initiative we came up with. Um, I wanna thank the, the police. They helped with this program as well. BJ and Carrie were part of this. Uh, Brittany here on staff, they really helped organize this. And we just did a call for volunteers to do anything from deliver groceries, to do medicine runs, to cut grass, whatever it was. If you were in that category of, you know, needing to be helped because of COVID, the citizens of Lockport were there. I mean, we had like 60 volunteers right out of the gate and they've been wonderful. Um, and this is still an active program today as we continue on and get through, you know, till this is finally behind us, we wanna make sure that we're taking care of everyone. So I wanna thank those we're part of Lockport Shield. And also, for those who need it, don't hesitate to call. Um, you know, we can't help those who we don't know if, if they don't reach out. I mean, there's, this is what the community's for, for helping each other. And look, let me just say one other thing. It's, it's no secret that I've, you know, had a lot of questions for the administration, you know, with how we're looking at these numbers, positivity rates, um, hospitalizations. I mean, I've had a lot of concerns especially when we had that kind of uh, rollback here in Region 7, Will County um, and Kankakee County, where our restaurants had to like forego indoor dining. It was gonna be tough uh, for us. And so we really wanted to make sure that we had the right answers. So we definitely pressed the, you know, the governor's office for those. Those answers were kind of tough to get. Sometimes we had to work through the Will County Governmental League and even there, the, it was tough to get the answers. Um, not saying I have them all yet even. Um, but you know that's okay if we're going to do something like this we want to make sure that we have the best facts that we can if we're going to have to enforce some of these things at the moment you know i believe that enforcing the phase four guidelines um, it's the right thing to do for our restaurants and businesses you know currently we are at like 7.2 percent positivity rate and if that's the metric they're using we're we're below the eight that was the problem um so i uh I know it's tough. I know it's decisions that the businesses have to make for themselves, um, but our position is to be as supportive as possible. And, um, and we'll continue to try to get answers, you know, from, from the governor's office and from uh, the health departments um, when we can. That's kind of our job. So that's that. Um, another thing too I wanna to talk a little bit about is, um, you know, there's a lot, of, uh, a lot of civil unrest in the country right now. Um, no secret about that. Uh, Lockport has been, um, again, blessed. I think we've had um, some good protection and, and, and I think there's reasons for that, which I'll explain in a bit. But, you know, one of the things that happened was uh, Pastor um, Ernest Jones, he's one of our police chaplains, and um, he had asked, this is him and his wife, and he had asked about uh, having a, a prayer vigil here. There was a number of African-American ministers in the region who were looking to do a prayer vigil is going to be hosted by a young evangelist named Julian Wright. Uh, and they asked if they could do it here at Lockport. And I said, absolutely. I'm a huge believer in the power of prayer. And uh, so 
they came out and it was really a, a special time. Um, you know, when these folks came out to City Hall and just began to pray on behalf of our country, our communities, our police, uh, our president, everyone, um, it was really a powerful, powerful time. And it happened to be the same day we had, you know, a Black Lives March Matter protest, which was right immediately adjacent to it. And it was very interesting to watch the contrast. You know, there was, you know, folks along the street in the beginning with bullhorns and signs, which are fine, they have their place, right? They are very good about drawing attention to problems. But though you don't fix problems, what fixes problems is, is relationships. And um, that was the beautiful thing about this prayer vigil, is when we had all these ministers come in and their families, and it went on for a couple hours, and we prayed together, and you know we submitted to God together. And then the best part of all happened at the end. At the end, my wife, thinking ahead, she's like, if people are going to come in, we got to feed them. So she got all this food. And at the end, everybody was here sitting in the grass, watching in the parking lot. We all got together and we ate together. And my one stipulation was just please sit with somebody you didn't come with. And, you know, when everyone sat with different folks and we started to build the relationships and we started to know people's names and we started to exchange phone numbers, that's the way change really happens. I mean, I'm just a crusty 53-year-old uh, Gen Xer, right? I don't know a lot. But one thing I know is that if you want to really get to the heart of the matter, it's only going to happen with relationships. And those are one at a time. And if we really care, we reach out and, uh, and start building those. And that's really what's essential. And so um, I was very happy to see that happen and just, uh, just put a dome of protection over the city through prayer and, and uh and these kind of connections. So that can lead us right into uh, our police department. You know, one of the things about our department when I came on board seven years ago was it was very important for me back then to create a community-oriented police department. Um, a department that looks at the community through the community's eyes and tries to find ways to support and protect and build those relationships because I think they're not only healthy for the residents, they're also healthy for our officers. So they never start thinking of themselves as an us versus them. It's always all of us together. There are, there are people who are here to protect us. And so it was always very important to me to create that kind of department. And uh, even when I brought Terry Lemming on board as the police chief, I mean, I, I took a lot of heat for that. <laughs> and so, but Terry was, I think the right guy to help lead that effort. And, uh, and he really was. You know, he came on board, he started the Lockport Love organization, which is, uh, goes around and helps community members um, who are in need. Every donation that comes to Lockport Love is 100% goes right back to the community. There's no, there's no profit taking at all. And so whether it's food donations, uh, whether it's uh, money and gift cards, this is again where the Lockport community has just so stepped up. Um, people have come together, businesses have come in, and you know, whether it's donating money, food, time, they go out every year at Christmas, the fire department comes out with us and the residents and we go to folks who are in need and uh, it, it's special, it's about community building. Um, they were partners with SHIELD as I mentioned earlier. I think every block party they had this year in the city, our police department went out and, and, and showed up and said hi and just again, building those relationships. They're great at, they've done the fish food pantry collections, uh, birthday parties during the COVID lockdowns. If anybody asked, our police department went out and did the drive-bys to wave with the cars and the sirens and just making kids who were just so isolated feel a little special. Um, they decorated their Halloween squad cars, uh, the turkeys instead of tickets, right? That goes on at Thanksgiving, thanks to Tuffy donating turkeys and, and, uh, and, and Mauer Plumbing. It's like a, it's a lot of fun. And again, the police connecting with community. Um, there were 22 officers who volunteered this year to go with underprivileged kids to help them take them to the store for clothes, toys, necessities. Again, it's about building community and it's about making um, you know folks feel like the police are here to protect and the police know that it's you know it's not an adversarial relationship. And so, I'm very, very honored and pleased to you know uh, have the department we do. So, Thank you, all the officers, Terry, and auxiliary officers who work pro bono, and they're out at car shows and directing traffic. All of you guys are just really blessed 
city of Lockport. Um, you know, on some nuts and bolts things, you know, the Illinois Association of Chiefs uh, has given us an accreditation, which is great. That means our departments, all the T's are crossed and the I's are dotted. Um, SafeWise Illinois. Uh, in 2019, we were the 10th safest city in Illinois. In 2020, we were 35th. Now, I asked Terry, I'm like, do you got any reason why 35th? He says, honestly, gosh, deep, I don't know. I don't know how we made 10th the first time. But, uh, you know what, about a thousand municipalities in, in Illinois, so I think it's a really great number. Um, and uh, we appreciate that. I think some of the things that we find that are problematic is uh, you know, we continue to have these fog regimens um, that are plaguing all the suburbs. One of the things that we did uh, and I asked Terry, did you do this about uh, the differences about four or five months ago? I said, Terry, I know that this is happening in other communities. Can we reach out to those other departments and let's start communicating? Let's find out like, you know, what you know, what we know and comparing notes. And, you know, Mike Kelly, the sheriff helped organize that outreach too. And the whole Will County started to really trade notes. And that helped us. It helped us to understand better times that these things happen. We started to be able to track where these, uh, you know, gang members are coming from, what communities they're coming from. And so it actually has started to help. Um, still a very difficult thing to, to deal with if people come in and blow in and blow out. One of the other things that's been helpful is we started a neighborhood watch. Um, we don't have one in every community yet. If you're interested, please don't hesitate to contact the city and we'll get you connected. But there has been some neighborhood watches that were started. Again, thank you for the police department of getting that organized and getting people kind of trained up and have a good understanding of what to do. Um, in these situations, so that's been helpful. And another thing too that uh, the police department did, we were looking at instituting a responsible renter program, but we needed some research and uh, the department did a great job really looking at, um, you know, rental properties that, it's not, it's not necessarily apartments, I know people get all worked up when they hear renters, but renters aren't bad people. I mean, I think almost all of us are renters. But oftentimes what happens though is we have places that are we're done without, you know, permits, that there were you know, more people that are in there than are supposed to be, these kinds of things are where we needed a better handle on. And so working towards getting a responsible renters program is, uh, is something that we're doing, but I definitely want to thank the police department for getting that, uh, getting that started. So again, great police department, very grateful um, to have them and uh, appreciate the, the community mindset that you guys all have, so thank you. All right. So let's go back and do some other stuff. Let's go uh, look at our finances. So finances, um, actually doing pretty good. Um, I hope we all sit there. All right, Benjamin. Was, is the mic not working? Ah, sorry, all right, try to be better. I have Ben here to laugh at my joke, so that way I know if I'm being funny or not when I, when I try to be, so. Let me hear a laugh, Ben. There it is, yeah. So anyways, uh, finances. Um, doing good. You know, honestly, our sales tax, we were, didn't know what to expect this year with the COVID stuff. But, you know, 2019, we had our best sales tax year ever at 29 or at 2.9 million. Um, we're actually only down about 3%, which is really incredible. Um, so even with all this COVID stuff for 2020, things uh, are doing okay. So again, very blessed to, uh, for that. You know, another thing is, uh, how did I get this to spin? There we go. Is uh, our general fund revenues. You know, every year we have lowered our rate. The years I've been here, seven years, and I think even two years prior to that, the rate that Lockport has for their property tax has gone down every time. Yes, in theory, that means your taxes should go down. <laughs> the, the one rub I can't control is when your property value goes up, and that's controlled by the township. And so um, we try to do our part and get those rates down, and we have every year. Um, so we're grateful to you know the city council and staff and uh, for helping make those things happen um i know it doesn't always translate into a lower tax bill but again it's uh, we do what we can to make it lower you know we had a double a plus credit credit rating which is about as good as you can get in a city our size um this is the second highest rating available um and we've had a, a gfoa financial excellence award this is uh for the ninth year we've had that going on and also Sting Distinguished Budget Award for the fifth year in a row. Um, very pleased and, and grateful for, for Lisa and Maggie and those who work in our finance department 
and, uh, and for a council that's uh, mindful of all these things and keeps a good eye on stuff. So thank you uh, for helping us keep, uh, keep our, our budget balanced. And I'm gonna tell you, man, there's some cities right now that are not in good shape because of this COVID stuff. Um, the fact that we're, uh, we're okay is really a testimony to uh, staff and council. Um, and uh, so thank you for all that. All right, another thing, uh, let's go to public works. So public works, uh, you know, there's a lot of work that went around the city this year. This year alone, we had almost uh, uh, $16 million worth of work happen around the city. If any of you guys, uh, you know, live in the neighborhoods, you kind of understood how this all went down. I mean, we replaced water mains, we replaced sewer pipes. Um, and look, I get it, man. When it's happening, it is disruptive and it stinks and your house is dirty and your cars are dirty and it's hard to get in and out. And I do apologize for the inconvenience, um, but the nice thing is when it's done, it really does make a big difference, right? Um, and getting rid of those uh, potholes and reconstruction of the streets, and even more importantly, what goes on underneath, right? It's really getting those new water mains replaced uh, so that helps us have the cleaner water and getting the sewers replaced as well, all very, very important. And so, um, Thank you for putting up with it. And I also want to be very thankful to staff. I know one thing is every time, once in a while stuff happens, right, and somebody's sidewalk is screwed up or their driveway's at a bad pitch now, something happens during construction, and we'll get the call. I want to be really grateful to uh, Brent Can and to Ben. You guys are absolutely magnificent when it comes to helping to remedy any problems that were caused through reconstruction. Because, you know, as things change a little bit and things aren't what they were before, there's bound to be problems. And, um, you know, thank you guys for doing your best to work with residents and, and remedy those problems. So, uh, and it still goes today. If you guys are finding things like, man, I'm getting water where I didn't have it before, call us and we'll do what we can to, to help rectify it and make it right. So, stuff. So, sometimes it's, um, it can be tricky. So, in any case, a lot of great work happening. Um, next year, we have budgeted $20 million. Uh, Again, we continue to want to be aggressive, especially getting those projects that have to deal with our water. You know, we did put a new deep well in up by the water tower, and we have a new water main that connects the north and the south sections of town, so we finally have a loop going on. Um, as that comes fully on board, that's really gonna make a big difference um, for how, uh, um, you know, the, 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 our water quality. So um, those are projects that we're really continue to focus on. Um, so great job to Public Works. We appreciate all that those guys are doing and the incredible amount of work and for your patients, residents, for, for putting up with it. You know, also going along with infrastructure, you know, our streetscape, right? That's been, <laughs> that, it, it looks great, right? Another one of those things that was hugely painful when it was going on. But now that it's done, it looks really nice. I mean, the, 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 the trees and the plantings really help soften up, you know, the way things look downtown. They help diminish some of the noise reverberations because let's face it, we have a very noisy uh, downtown, it's a, it's a state highway both ways, so it's very busy. Um, all these things have really added to the warmth of our downtown. Um, it's just nice to see, right? But, and here's the other thing with it. it. It took a long time, and when you look at this, it may not seem like, well, why did it take so long? All the heavy lifting was underground, right? There were empty vaults, there were retaining walls that had to get built. Uh, while they were up, we replaced water mains and gas lines and had to, you know, coordinate with different utilities. It's all very complicated, crazy work. And that's why it took so long. Um, it was heavy. Uh, uh, you know, it was very difficult for us all to get through it. Um, but it looks good and uh, very pleased with the outcome. You know, the sister cities with Asiago, they had the, the benches program. Um, there's still more benches that are going out. Uh, we're looking at extending the streetscape another block now. We only work within our means, right? We didn't go out for bond on this stuff. We kind of did what I think, you know, we do as responsible people is, you know, only spend not what we don't have, but what we have in our budget. So now that we've gone through this, we're looking at extending the streetscape for another block. I can say this though, won't be nearly as um, heavy handed because all the underground work was already done. It's just gonna be the pretty stuff on top. So that's the good news. Uh, as we move forward. Another project that we're gonna do too is we made this uh, opening here off of uh, 10th Street. Um, we're gonna consolidate all this gravel parking lot. The, the wall that's in the back there is coming down. So we'll have one big uh, public parking lot in the back. Uh, thankful for all the property owners who were able to work with us. And uh, it's really gonna make a big difference back there. We're gonna have 
the garage is coming down. There'll be other parking back here. Um, it'll all be back behind the building, so it uh, won't be obnoxious out front. And um, that's a great project. I think we're still going to try to break ground on that bend this year, so we're looking forward to that. September 21st. So um, look for that, because you know we always know that parking is always either a real problem or even if it's just perceived sometimes. Um, we continue to uh, try to find ways to help resolve that. So that'll be one of them. I think that was all our pictures for that. Oh, and I think we got a, um, a cool fire pit coming in here, Ben, right in front of uh, the Boy Scout building. So that should really be a fun little feature that comes into downtown as well. So we'll look forward to that. Uh, summer art series. Um, hey, can you do me a favor, Steve? Can you go get Wendy? I think she's probably standing up there. I want to introduce her to something. So, you know, the summer art series are things that we try to do to um, just, you know, build some some energy in the downtown. And, uh, and it's also, you know, a lot of people don't realize this, but it's very much about using it to uh, attract development as well. You know, when uh, I first started this job, I wanted to make sure we brought some energy into the downtown um, and into our city uh, to attract development. And, and it does help. I 100% I, I know it does. Two big developers that are here in town now said that they're here because of just, you know, they get the invites to come into you know, whether it was the steampunk thing or whether it was uh, the spooky night out or whatever the projects were, um, it really does make a difference. And so, you know, one of the things too that we've been able to be blessed with is our Illinois State Museum campus uh, is here in town. And, uh, and, you know, we worked hard to make sure that those guys kept the presence here in Lockport. Right now they have the uh, surplus scrap project going on, which is really kind of fun. It's all stuff from the old Joliet prison and a number of artists came in and and did some really cool uh, pieces. If you had to have a chance to go down there, you really need to go see this stuff. Those balls that you got to wear on your leg, you did, <laughs> those things are heavy, man. So um, go down there and try one on, right? Um, but there's just a lot of really cool, cool projects. All this stuff was assemblage that came out of uh, the Joliet prison. So go down there, visit John and Nancy. They'll love to see you. They're like about the, uh, the funnest people in town. So. Um, don't hesitate to go down to the Illinois State Museum campus and, uh, and visit what's going on down there. Uh, another thing that we did last year was uh, the um, Midwest Waterways uh, Film Festival. This was really cool. This was working with the Roxy Theater, and uh, this was fun. We had a number of different nights. We had drama, comedy, horror, documentary evenings, um, all independent filmmakers, right? And so really giving independent filmmakers an opportunity to show their stuff in a really cool intimate theater and in a place where after they show their film, you know, we can get up and talk about it and take questions. And it was a small venue that was very fun. We were all ready to do it again this year, but of course the whole COVID thing happened. And while we could have probably done it with the um, limitations, even with you know, the amount of people that can go in, it, it, it was hard for us to recruit filmmakers so late in the game because we didn't know what we were going to do with, with it. But next year, definitely um, look forward to, uh, to the Waterways Film Festival again. Um, I know that uh, Joseph Standing Bear, you know, the guy's Midwest Soaring is here in town. He asked if they can have a Native American night for film. I said, absolutely, man. So there's going to be a lot of fun things going on for next year as well. And speaking of a next year project, I got Wendy. Come on in, man. So Wendy is the chair of our summer art series. Look at this. I don't have to social distance with Wendy because she's my <laughs> wife. Yeah. So she's here to introduce uh, uh, an initiative and a program that she's come up with. So please. Okay. Look, I think you need to be talking to this, though. I got the fancy look. So this is the part of the show where you get out your piece of paper that came with your lunch, and then you also have your fabulous rubber ducky, and we're going to talk about those things right now. Um, so if you guys will take a look over here, you probably wondered why there was this uh, bizarre bear in the back corner here. This is kind of representative of a project that our mayor did uh, several years ago, because he is an art guy. And um, this was Inja Bear. These were bears that downtown Naperville actually had uh, businesses sponsor, and they were decorated. And this one was from an engineering company, which was really cool. So we're looking at doing something kind of similar in the sense that um, we are going to have uh, a critter. And our critter is going to be a duck. And from this visual, you can see that the duck is going to be 36 inches in height. And you'll be able to sit on him. And uh, the theme of our uh, duck 
parade, I guess, if you will, is uh, to keep our small businesses afloat. So we've been talking about ways that we can help our businesses, and um, we know that there are businesses during COVID that were able to stay open and they were able to flourish. We are appealing to you or anyone else that has the money to put aside that they could put towards this project. The way it would work is you would donate $3,000 as an individual, as a business, as a corporation, whatever it may be. That $3,000 will buy one of these lovely ducks and it will also come with a professional artist. The Illinois State Museum here in Lockport, our very own John Lustig, is curating a list of professional artists. So it, within that $3,000, you will get access to a list of artists and they will consult with the small business that you will be partnered with. We can talk about how um, maybe if there's a particular business that you wanna support or we'll be choosing the businesses for you. And then there will be a ribbon cutting and an opening and closing ceremonies uh, where the small business and the corporation will get together and do a ribbon cutting at the um, Memorial Day weekend. And our goal is um, this isn't about money. The reality is um, the city's been able to supply grants via federal money, state money, we have an opportunity again for grants. This is so much more than this. It, this is long-term thinking. This is bigger thinking. Our goal is can we get people to come and visit those businesses and get them back on their feet, put our arms around them and support them. That's what we're trying to do with these ducks. Um, ultimately, there'll be a program in place for families and children to come downtown and to see the ducks and take pictures with them and put them on social media. And we'll uh, release much more of that later. But at this point, um, we need to get those ducks out there. So if you guys would, please, if there's uh, anything in your budget, to possibly take on one of these businesses. Maybe it's in your budget to support more than one business. We're asking for your help. We're asking for you to email us. On the back of our sheet is a contact, our very own Donna Nevels. Please reach out to her. If you've got any questions, you can send them in the chat now to our very own Mr. Benson. We're happy to answer those, but we would love to see at least 25 of these fabulous ducks out in our community that we could really draw attention and um, really support these businesses and show them that we're supporting them through this program. So um, again, please contact Don uh, Donna Nevels if you have any questions. Mayor Stripe, back to you. I told John Lustig, I said, if, make sure you get that there Picasso fella to do one of our ducks. So hopefully, you know, we'll be able to make that happen. Um, so anyways, uh, yeah, I, it's a, a fun thing. And uh, just I appreciate the Summer Art Series Committee and, of course, my wife for, for working so hard on all those things. So, uh, all right, so the Summer Art Series. Oh, hey, this has been fun. So the, um, let's talk a little bit about the car show. Is this better now? Or am I still crackling? Okay, sorry everybody, a little better, all right. Um, the car show was a lot of fun. I mean, we, uh, you know, the Chamber of Commerce had thought about moving it into the downtown for a couple reasons. One is uh, the car show guys have always wanted it there. Two, we wanted to show off um, our new downtown. And three, it's really about helping to support the businesses. And, and it really did make a difference. Um, you know, one thing about when we have the car show here at City Hall, uh, State Street might as well be Australia, right? Nobody goes down there. And um, so the, uh, it's been really nice to see the energy down there um, of everybody. Uh, so it's just been really fun. I started trying to get some farmer's market. Those are hard to spin up. I appreciate that those have come in. Uh, hopefully over time, you know, as uh, time goes on over the years, you know, you really start building up a cadre of people that come out for the farmer's market. Um, but they take time. So kudos to Annette for getting folks to come out. I think she did a great job. Um, 
So yeah, the, uh, I mean, look at that. Does that look like a fun downtown or what, right? So it's just been really cool to see that happen. Um, not to say that next year I want to stop doing at least musical venues here at City Hall. I mean, we still have bands come out, you know, and, and do stuff on the City Hall grounds because everybody likes sitting out here with our lawn chairs and, and listening to music. Um, or maybe we'll work more with uh, the uh, Gallery 7 who does it over there at the Lincoln Landing, but uh, we'll make sure we continue to have good music venues as well. But the car show has been a lot of fun. Um, I know there's some concern about lack of social distancing at the car show. I'm pretty sure anybody who came in this car social distance, right? <laughs> the front and back, man. All right. So anyways, good stuff with that. I appreciate uh, the chamber working hard on that stuff. Hey, Julian's in the house. Come on up here, Julian. Julian, I, you know what I hate about COVID? I can't like give big hugs and kisses like I normally do. But come on in here, man. We'll give a little social distance. Julian is just evangelist. I so much appreciate what you did here and, uh, and just blessing the city with prayer. Um, it was a huge thing. And your parents were wonderful and Julia and... It was just, just such a, a pleasure to have you guys here, man. I, I can't tell you enough. And like I said, I, I, COVID hugs and everything, <laughs> man. Um, you know, I, 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 I know you were running late because probably the bridge traffic, right? We'll get to that later. But, um, you know, if you wanted to say a few words, uh, what's on your heart, and just please, by all means, I'm glad you're here. Thank you so much, Mayor, for this awesome opportunity. I thank also for his lovely wife and everyone that's listening. Um, I really... Thank God and honor this mayor on today. Um, even you, if he already mentioned the prayer event that had took place, it was such an awesome, awesome move. I've gotten so many responses just for that great event. And um, they wanted to know what a great mayor would allow that event to happen. And so <laughs> I'm so happy that to be in connection with a great friend of mine, Mayor, and I'm so happy to be able to you know, be here with you all and to be able to also continue to pray for um, Lockport within itself. And through this circuit, it will get better with Jesus, for sure. Very good, thank you so much, Julian. Thank I appreciate you. you coming all the way out here for this and uh, it's been a real blessing. Just, uh, it's wonderful to see what God does through a young man who just thank dedicates you. his heart. So thank, thank you, man. You. COVID handshakes, thank right you. on. <laughs> no, good, thank you, bro, appreciate thank it, man. You. Thank you. Um, so in any case, uh, some other stuff. I'll talk about a little bit about the, the park district. Um, you know, the park district 75th year anniversary going on this year. So that is really fun. And, and we do have a great park district. I mean, there's so many cool things that go on here at our uh, district. I mean, they just have a, a zillion things happening at any one time. I know with COVID, everything kind of took a hit and programs, you know, got thrown by the wayside. But man, these guys do a great job. Everything from travel trips to um, you know, uh, classes to fitness classes to fun classes to daycare. I mean, just they do so much. And the, the city has been really blessed to have them here for the last 75 years. Um, you know, one of the things, too, that uh, was good news for them, they got a $400,000 OSLAD grant uh, for Delwood Park. Phase one is going to start here in the fall of 2020. They'll be resurfacing some of the walking paths, a pavilion over by the tennis court. Phase two is going to start in the spring, and there'll be some playground uh, equipment replacement and a butterfly garden. So I know those guys work hard to get those grants, and um, so thank you for all that. You know, <laughs> and then here's a, something interesting, man. So um, the Canyons Disc Golf Course ranked number five in the world, right? The world, man. So <laughs> that's pretty impressive. So I think, uh, yeah. Sweden got ahead of us there for a little bit in Canada, but we beat out Sweden in another one in Norway. So that's really incredible, number five. And I think we can safely say that because we've done some pretty good exploration of our solar system, we don't know of any other disc golf course. We could say number five in the solar system, I think is fair to say. So great job, uh, Park District and Canyons. Uh, it's really been a, a fun thing to see. And, um, and just all the stuff the Park District's doing. So I know you guys are having a, uh, you know, chomping at the bit to get your normal scheduling going back. Um, but it's also nice to see so many. I've seen more people walking Delwood Park now than I've ever seen in my life because everybody understands. It's like, you know what? We need to stay healthy. We need to stay fit. Um, and as much as I've been talking about supporting the restaurants, uh, it, it's okay to split it with your wife, right? You can eat in moderation, <laughs> still support our restaurants, but exercise, go for walks. And that's been a huge part of what I see out there at Delwood Park. A lot of people just staying fit and, uh, and doing the right thing. So we're really blessed to have that park um, and, and, and the whole district. All right, what else we got going on? Um, the high school. 
There's a, uh, another organization, man, that's just really, um, I got to hand it to uh, Bob McBride and uh, the board and, and Ann and, and everyone who's just been working so hard, right, to try to figure out how to handle um, educating and giving our children the best, uh, keeping them safe and, you know, dealing with uh, every range of emotion, right? You guys know how it is. You got parents on one side and parents on the other side. So how do you deal with the range of emotions and demands that come from this? And I think if uh, they've really done their best to try to help the kids. I know they, you know, had some programs set up in the beginning. They got kind of pushed around a little bit by some last minute changes um, that came from on high. But um, I know that they've, uh, it looks like they'll be doing a week on, two weeks off coming up. Um, doing their best to get some some interaction with the kids and and here's the hard thing it's my wife's a teacher right um, it's just tough on the kids and one of the problems that we face is you know she'll I remember during the lockdowns right your kids were home from school but we go to Menards and there's one of her students working the cash register it's like Ugh, this isn't are we keeping them safe it's kinds of things and so that's always been the struggle um, and so it's really a matter of uh, balancing all of these things within our homes and, uh, and understanding that those with little kids are having a hard time of, uh, you know, I know, I know parents have to go to multiple daycare centers because they can only get a day here or a day there. So, man, this really is tough. So um, I appreciate all the school districts um, doing what they can uh, to help as much as possible to make this smooth. You know, these are some statistics I got in the beginning of the year uh, when I was going to do the state of the city in March. Um, but, you know, we... Uh, 3,700 students, um, you know, we have a, a pretty large district here. It's one of the largest in the state, actually. Um, we have a 93% graduation rate and 93% freshmen are on track. We've got uh, almost 1,200 uh, AP exams taken with 27.5% of the seniors receiving the AP credits. We've got uh, great athletic teams and 52 clubs, state champion bowling for girls, uh, co-ed cheer teams, third place at state. We just have a dynamic school. And we're all looking forward to, of course, uh, getting back to, to normal with it so uh, these kids can just really start, uh, you know, ha having that experience of school and learning and interacting with one another. But in the meantime, uh, our, just our thoughts and support to, to the boards and to the superintendents of all of our schools who are just in a really, really tough position. So um, whatever you need from us, you know, the city, let us know. But uh, um, we appreciate all that you're doing through this. Uh, let's see what else we got. Dun, 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 dun. Oh, this is fun. So I don't know if you guys remember, like if those of you who attended State of the City last year, we had uh, talked about the Makers Park. And this was an area where I was trying to get set up on the old Chevron property, which would be like a new building and a place where, you know, uh, entrepreneurs who were starting out could get a foothold and, you know, have this kind of synergy where they're all working together. I know Julia Junior College was part of it because they thought of being part of it too, even with the culinary division. Um, I know Peter Limberger over at CL Enterprises, he was part of this. Uh, the county helped with it. I'll do the feasibility study. One of the things that came back in the feasibility study was um, taking it up in a phase. And so instead of just thinking we're going to build a you know, $50 million building um, and where do we get investors for that, it's like, what can we do on a smaller scale? And so we took advantage of something that was coming up. There was a building here just north of the Gaylord that had to get condemned. Um, it was able to get into the city's hands. So it's like we own the property and we took down the building, which you see going on here. And what we're going to do in phase one is, I don't know how familiar you guys are with um, shipping container maker spaces. Um, they're very popular. Um, this is like where people take shipping containers and they convert them into small businesses. This is a music shop. This one was a clothing shop. Uh, these were some in Batavia. These weren't shipping containers, but they were small little huts that were built. Um, it was a coffee house. Uh, I mean, there's just a lot of these things. This one here is in St. Charles. This is actually like a pub. I saw it uh, a few weeks ago. It was a double-decker one. So what we want to do is take this space and we're going to flatten it out. We'll have... Um, a, uh, uh, it'd be temporary parking, but also as we start to get these shipping container businesses in, we'll be able to fit them in and nestle them and really create a fun little dynamic. And I forgot to put my one picture in here. There's uh, the, our first 
our first shipping container is gonna be called Second City Greens. Um, they're gonna be here probably in a month or so. They actually are a hydroponic grower, so they'll grow lettuce and fresh vegetables. They'll sell to all our local restaurants. They'll be able to go on year round, so we'll have fresh you know, uh, vegetables year round for these folks. Um, they're gonna start with one trailer. They may end up stacking a few if things go well, and I think it will, and they said, hey, we can even open those trailers to the public as well in the future. But that will be our first uh, shipping container business. But you know, to me, this is like really important because it's so hard for, for young entrepreneurs to get a foothold anywhere. Um, just down the street, we have the American Fighter Fighters uh, business that makes the shipping containers into um, uh, little units for firefighting training. The guy's name is Red, he works over there, he's a great guy. We talked a little bit about um, what would it cost to convert you know, uh, a shipping container like this for a small business you know, with uh, AC or heat and windows. And he's like, I, I think I could pull it off for about 20 grand. And he's just down the block, which means anyone who's doing this can be right here and interact. Um, but I mean, to be able to start a business for, for 20 to $30,000 and um, it's yours, right? And if you ever wanna go, you pick it up and you take it with you, right? It's like, but I mean, it's, it's an attainable place. And we talked about working with some of the banks here in town, whether it's you know, BMO, First Midwest, about creating small business loans specifically tailored for this because the cities, you know, this isn't like we're looking to make uh, big money on rent or anything. I think we're basically just telling who's ever there has to split the taxes for the property. So that's not the issue. Um, so being able to have you know, uh, the banks work with some of these small businesses, but this is gonna be interesting. How this plays out, uh, I'd really love to see it. Um, and uh, making it the first phase of our Makers Park and start to build that mojo and energy, I think will uh, we'll, we'll go a long way. And we're even working with the property just north of that to have an indoor space as well uh, for these kind of businesses. So if this is something any of you are interested in, um, please call me uh, or Lance over at the, uh, uh, the building department and, and let's explore some of your ideas and, and see what we can make. Remember, it's not a storage container, it's a business. So um, keep that in mind and uh, look forward to doing some really fun things down there and getting, getting that whole path down there created with energy. And, and I'll tell you another thing too that makes this really a good space. You know, right here, when you think about this space, on the other side of the Gaylord building was the public landing. And when the canal was built, it was where all the commerce in the city happened, right? All those boats would pull up, people would get their, unload their stuff or load stuff. It was a place of commerce and trade. And one of the reasons that Abraham Lincoln supported the bill to get the canal dug was because he liked the fact that anybody could use it. It wasn't like the railroad, right? The railroad, it's like your railroad. And if you, you, you have to, you don't just jump on with your own private rail car and start doing business. But the canal, my gosh, if you had a canoe, you could be in business, right? And you could start moving goods back and forth. And that's one of the reasons Lincoln liked it. It's one of the reasons he supported it. And to have this kind of place where anybody can do business, right? In a way that's like cost effective and maybe a little unique and weird is I think perfectly in line with, with the history of our town. So uh, I think it's fun. And uh, thank you for staff uh, working with us to try to find ways to make that happen. Uh, bum, ba, da, bum. All right, let's talk about um, development, right? So lots of, lots of really big things, great things, fun things um, that we've seen you know, over the past year. You know, uh, Jed over at uh, the GL Auto Lounge has got that up and running. It's a detail shop and um, <laughs> he's been pretty funny. He tells me, he's like, man, people in Lockport have some really nice cars. <laughs> they come and get detailed over there. Um, he sells some really nice stuff as well. Uh, and what a transformation that was, right? From the old Catalina building. Uh, Chipotle and Modder here. There's a new lease right in the middle. I had the logo for this company all set up and then I was told, no, they don't want to talk about it just yet. So I was like, all right, all right that's fine. But you'll, you'll like what's coming between the two of them. It's a, it's a fun building, a uh, fun business. Um, so that's happening. Uh, Christian Brothers, I mean, they did a really nice job on this building, right? I mean, it's just gorgeous. They're staying busy. Uh, appreciate them here. The donut shop, right? I was really sad when Rolling Donuts left, but the donut shop, I mean, these guys are good, right? So. I appreciate that. Uh, bum, bum, bum. The Holiday Inn Express, it's going up, right? We've got construction going on. It's nice to see that's uh, finally uh, broken ground and, and it's happening. I will say on a sadder note, I doubt Marcus Theaters is ever gonna come. Let me just be frank with you guys. Um, I think between this COVID thing 
and I don't know, I could never get them on the phone after they bought the property in the past, so I don't have high hopes for that. Um, but Bentonhausen, they're still looking at building. I know they had to slow a little bit with um, what they were doing, but uh, last time I talked to them, still much, very much on board with uh, coming in there. But we'll, you know, really try to work with the rest of the, the plaza. I mean, it's a whole new world, right? I mean, when I came in this job seven years ago, it was all about the, the, the power center, right? Like we'd see everywhere in the world, right? The Lockport Square was the power center. And before that, 15 years earlier was the shopping mall, right? You know, America changes pretty quick. Shopping malls went out, the power center's out, and now we deal with online retail and what that means. So it's an interesting challenge for, for how we deal with the rest of the site. Going back to why I like the Makers Park, I like people who make stuff, right? And, and we know them and we see them and talk to them. But in any case, uh, so Holiday Inn Express is getting built out. Uh, La Michicana, these guys are great, right, Alex? And um, so that, if you haven't been there, this is a great spot to go. Um, the old Pizza Hut building finally came down. Uh, the $3 car wash is gonna come up. Uh, so it'll finally get rid of that really bad eyesore. And you know, we, it was, we tried for years to get you know, something there. And so it's really nice to see something happening and, and utilizing the lot. Um, B and B produce, uh, B and B foods, you know, they've been down here at the division and state for a long time, um, and they just outgrew. Um, again, we want to thank them for helping out with uh, the food pantry and 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 Shield, uh, but now they're going to build a, uh, a much larger building out here in. Um, dun -dun -dun, let me get the map up. It's over by the Bodome in the uh, our park down south. So they'll be down here in Prime Boulevard. So B and B produce will build their new building out there. Uh, just really glad that they uh, stayed here in Lockport. It's nice to see, you know, business, you know, just grow over time and be able to still find a place here in town to expand. I mean, I don't think I made a slide for uh, Skyline Displays. Uh, my apologies. So Skyline, the cabinet makers, those guys are in Prime now too. Um, they're right here. So uh, Prime is filling out a little at a time. Uh, let me sorry, let me just jump through real quick. So. Dun, 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 dun. Oh, Lockwood Animal Hospital suffered a little tragedy, right? But good things can happen, right? After the fire, uh, I think the telephone line the pole crashed <laughs> into their roof. Fortunately, nobody was hurt. But they have a new building now, and it looks spectacular. We really want to thank them. Uh, you know, uh, Nick and Ivy just opened. Uh, you know, a local couple. Um, it's really nice to see uh, uh, those guys here very fun um, and you, know, you go sit outside and everybody's having a good time with uh, and they have good beers I mean me and Ben got a flight the other day right it's a thumbs up so that's been good stuff um, you know uh, downstairs below this has all been you know refurbished um, it's open for rent these two spaces but I mean it's so it's clean it's nice the whole building right under Nick and Ivy so there's two units down there that are available um, really nice uh, O'Reilly is here. Uh, they built on that empty lot. Welcome them. Uh, S&S Activewear, you know, they uh, were the first big tenant in Prologis. Uh, you know, I stopped in there the other day and just, uh, it's really great to see um, just all the employees that are here. I mean, it just it employs a lot of people that are working there full time. Um, that's nice to see. They also have this great uh, uh, solar panel farm that, you know, helps power their building. That's been really I, I like green, man, so when you get it, it's fun to see. Um, so I appreciate that. Uh, this was the original Stagecoach building in the city, and now it's all been cleaned up, and uh, it really looks great. So uh, thank you to uh, Gallus Construction. They did a, a magnificent job with it. Um, of course, there's uh, the Stagecoach building. I didn't, sorry, I didn't get a good front view of this, but you guys have all seen it. You know, uh, Bob Morris at... Um, with Orbis Architecture has done just a magnificent job looking at the old historic photos and getting it restored and uh, working with the H&A committee to find uh, modern materials, right? Will reflect, you know, uh, our history in our National Registered Historic District. So that has just been really fun to see this whole number of buildings all restored. Um, across the street, Tangled Roots, that's another microbrewery coming in and the Lock and Mule Restaurant. Yes, it's taken a while, but they um, are building out. In fact, here's the inside right now. They're getting the drywall up, and this is a big open kitchen where you watch everybody cook, and uh, this is really exciting to watch happen. 
Um, and it's good, they're doing it right. You know, when they got in there, they saw some problems structurally repaired, so that's why it kind of took them a little bit longer, but it's being done right and, you know, last another 100 years. So really grateful to see those guys coming in. Um, some other things that are coming up, uh, you know, the old test zone lots, you know, they're kind of been overgrown and, you know, we've been working with the, the owner. The owner's a, a young kid, you know, when the father passed away, it's like, so trying to work with him and within the lawyer uh, who represents them to, to make stuff happen. But finally, the properties have been purchased and um, I'm gonna do some mixed use development, some retail on the first floor, some living space on the top. This is just a rendering, not necessarily of what is gonna go in the lot, but similar. Um, I know that they, we talked to them about making sure that whatever facades we do fit within the character of our town. They don't look like oddballs. So uh, very open to that. Um, so it'll be nice to see those, those lot fixed up and, and Taft School, right? Finally see some, uh, some new revenues, some new property tax revenues uh, going to Taft, which has always been landlocked and tough. So that'll actually be part of their district, which will be nice to see. Um, you guys remember where Papa Joe's was? We got the shack barbecues uh, building out in there. We're looking forward to those guys getting some barbecue in town. Um, our first taco truck, right? Uh, city Council passed uh, the, uh, we, we had an ordinance that didn't allow taco trucks, or not taco trucks, uh, food trucks uh, to come into town. Just because we're always concerned about brick and mortar stores and supporting them. So uh, we do allow them, you know, we've got some stipulations. This one's perfect, right? It's far up uh, on State Street um, in the lot where the Christmas trees, uh, they sell them every year. She said they don't work all year, so I still see Christmas trees there in the wintertime in case you were worried. But in the meantime, Get some tacos. They're really, really good, and uh, I'm glad to see that. Uh, it's another way of supporting, you know, entrepreneurs and small businesses. Uh, this is where Papa Joe's moved again. Glad to see a business just wants to expand and not leave town, and they did. They opened up uh, uh, over there on the old Corwin Plaza, right? So the inside looks great. Of course, all this COVID stuff hit just as they're doing their opening. Um, but again, like everybody, you know, support them. There's you know, still. Uh, sit outside and these guys are very accommodating and uh, just they did a great job on the inside so we all look forward to when we get back to normal here and supporting that place as well the old people's cleaners building um, that's just if you've ever been in it it's uh, it's pretty scary right but um, fortunately it's getting it's gonna um, be redone and it's actually gonna go back to the way it looks, you know, before it was turned into the, uh, you know, Southwest stucco, right? Back in the, whenever, the 50s or 60s. So this is pretty much uh, what it looked like uh, before then, before all this facade was put on. And um, it'll have the retail and the apartment just like it was before. Uh, looking forward to that again. Uh, thanks to Bob, always doing a great job, very sensitive to, you know, the, the city and our historic district. Uh, another project he's working on too is the whole where the Villanova pizza is, um, you know, that's kind of, uh, it was a great thing when it happened, you know, 40 years ago, really needed an update. Um, it was purchased where, you know, we'll still have the commercial on the first floor, we'll have living space on the second floor, and just really get a total rehab with balconies, and um, it, it should totally uh, look, look different and really uh, be a great addition up there. And that whole plaza has been turned around, right? When we had the Montessori school come in, uh, when Hollingsworth uh, moved over there, they needed more space too. And uh, just with all the businesses that are there, um, it's really nice to see that, that whole plaza, which had been tired for so long, just really start to turn around. And so this will be a great addition as well. Um, oh yeah, I thought I'd throw this in just because it's cool. So this is a ceiling medallion that I made for my front room, right? Thought I'd just show that off because you know. Made that out of two by fours, right? You know how hard it is to get a two by four these days, right? And then uh, anyways. Just kidding. So um, that was that project. And then what else we got? Da -da -da, da -da -da. So lastly, let's wrap it up. Um, the, uh, this is the one nice thing, right? Normally when we're doing this live, everybody's like, oh dear God, when's it gonna shut up? I can't escape. I'm sure half of you turned your TVs off already, right? So, but that's okay, because you can and not have to be embarrassed. Um, but in any case, for those of you who are still hanging in, I'll just go through a few things that uh, you know, some initiatives and things that we're working on. Uh, one of the things you may have noticed was as you're coming over the bridge, there's a much longer turn queue. So if you have to make a left onto State Street, you can these days uh, with a longer turn queue. That was actually a citizen's uh, suggestion to me. 
five years ago. That's how long it takes for this stuff to happen, man. By the time you got to work with IDOT and CN and all these other things. Um, oh, I'm not plugged in over there. I thought I plugged in. All right. I mean, that's, that's uh, God telling me I got to wrap it up, right? So um, anyways, uh, so that longer queue is there. Uh, also, we are in the last phase of putting a channelization in along. Ben, I think that plug is there. It might have come out of the wall or it might be loose down there. If you follow this cord, man, this is the plug for it. So I, I must have uh, undid it or something. Um, so in any case, uh, you know, one of the reasons that, you know, we have backups is, uh, y you know, if you're, somebody's making a left turn into, say, Tuffy, everybody has to wait behind them. Or worse, they all zip around on that shoulder at 40 miles an hour and freak everyone out. So having that center turn lane um, from, I think, Garfield all the way up to where it's, uh, I think, over maybe by the auto zone or something will really help keep traffic flowing, keep people safer, keep people from whipping around you. Um, so we're in the last phase of that, so we're hoping to start that uh, within a year or so. Uh, the Bruce Road, Caton Farm Bridge, I know, right? It's just one of those things that, like, just takes forever. Um, we do have a TCC meeting coming up Thursday, um, and, you know, it's, it, come on, we, we got to move this along. One of the things that um, has been really important, though, is the next part, and that is a Bruce Road 355 interchange. To me, I've always said that that whole route, that new bridge, is useless unless we have an interchange at 355, and the plan never called for one. And it didn't call for one because this is the way the government works. It's like, well, that's a tollway. They don't talk to the state or they don't talk to IDA. They go, oh my gosh, right? So independently, the city council and staff, we went to um, the tollway and we put up some money to do the first bit of engineering to get that rolling. Because if we don't have an interchange, it's just gonna be useless, right? Now I know that we got Galgar Road. Um, I got that on board so that if that ever gets widened, it's the state's job to do it, right? But in the meantime, the goal is that everybody gets on at 355. No one doesn't have to take Galgar. That's been the, the you know kind of the method behind all the madness, is get that interchange going on. So we will continue to uh, work with the tollway to make that happen. Um, very important part of it. Uh, we just did a new 171 corridor plan. That's you know basically all the way up Archer Avenue, just kind of so that we can be not reactionary but proactive. Right? There's properties that are for sale and you know, um, if people are gonna come in and develop them, we don't wanna make sure that they don't do it as an island and we just thought the way how everything would interconnect. And it was a very good plan. I appreciate uh, staff uh, and Lance and all the work they did on that. It's not that there's any interested parties. It was just about us being proactive. Oh, Canal Days, you know, we're looking at moving it. We we're gonna do it the, this year, but there was some, you know, with the whole COVID thing. But you know, this is the city's property now, just north of the park. And you, know, you may have seen all those mounds of the, the chip. What we wanna do is really kind of, just like Chevron did here with this hard pack, is just make this so that it, a carnival can sit on there, parking can be out here. Um, this has all been laid out, man. We could put like hundreds of cars for parking, parking out here, um, you know, the carnival, the food court, the band, everything can be here. It's right across the river from the Heritage Village. I mean, really making, old canal days about the canal, right? Which is what it was always about uh, when those residents started this back, I think it was in the 60s, right? It's like, hey man, the canal was forgotten about. It's a drainage ditch now. So how do we, how do we bring back that history? So really surrounding the canal and really uh, just turning that back around is gonna be fun. So that is something that hopefully we can um, get that all set up for next year. Oh, let me go back here. Uh, the freight study, you know, I'm working with the Metropolitan it's called CMAP, um, CED, Will County. Um, just really trying to nail this, uh, you know, the, these trucking routes. You know, um, Lockport, we've done, I think, a pretty good job keeping uh, kind of the logistics operations as close to the highway as possible, right? Well, believe me, I've had, we could have had 4 million more square feet of logistics in Lockport. Uh, they knock on the door all the time. Um, but either I tell them no because uh, they don't have the zoning for it um, or else uh, it's just an impossible spot. Like I've had them knocking on the doors at the Chevron property. I'm like, you can't do logistics down there. It's just not going to work. I don't care what the zoning is. Um, it's just like one little entrance down there and it would overwhelm everything. So we've done our best to keep these things in 
at the highway entrances, but it doesn't mean every other community thinks that way. And so it's really about working together with the whole metropolitan area about how we're routing freight and trucks. It is the new paradigm, right? As much as we may not like trucks, uh, every time you order something on Amazon or Etsy, thank a truck, right? So it's part of, you know, uh, it's part of commerce today. So, but finding a way to balance it. So we continue to work on the freight study with these organizations. Uh, we've had a zoning code update, which probably makes everybody's eyes gloss over, but it's actually very important. Um, and then lastly, I think uh, you guys may have heard, especially this is important to you if you live in the Homer Township side of our boundary. You know, uh, everything east of uh, Farrell is Homer Township. And, you know, one of the struggles is, you know, these residents have always paid a very high rate um, for the, uh, the highway department. And you know, for unincorporated work. And it's like, it's like, you know, I don't know, like three times more than the Lockport side. Partly it's because of this weird agreement that the village of Homer Glen and the highway department have had where they take care of their city roads. So we're paying for Homer city roads, which has always been a problem. And so, you know, we've been pushing on this now for some time to get it rectified. And you know, the good news is the Homer High Township and the village of Homer Glen are all, and us, we're all working together to to make a, a, um, the, a right solution. And that would be uh, if the assets go to the city of, or the village of Homer Glen, um, they would make Lockport whole for the assets that our residents have paid for, for all those uh, years. And that a rate would come down because you wouldn't have to, you'd only have to pay for 18 miles of roads instead of 140 miles of roads. Anyways, we're working hard on that. We'll keep an eye on it. I know there's a referendum to get it dissolved, but how it's set up afterwards is what's important. And I just want to show you Lockport's um, at the table and, and working with George and Homer and, and Pam has been good. I think we all, we're all on the same page. Um, so that's good stuff. Any case, um, you know, that's, uh, that's everything. I, uh, I can't tell if anyone's still there. I know I kept Ben and Tim and Julian and Steve here, right? Because <laughs> they kind of felt trapped. But um, if anyone's uh, still in line, I want to thank you for your time and uh, just, uh, just love in Lockport, and um, it's a great community, and it's an honor to uh, to serve here and um, and uh, just be part of this community. So thank you. God bless. Good day.